So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the EU's potential um, um, actions if the UK takes more unilateral actions. So we're going to be talking about the EU's options when it comes to legal actions or other options they can take. As we've seen, kind of the rhetoric slow down a bit with the UK asking for an extension to the end of the grace period on things like chilled meats. But just in case the EU reject it or something happens or whatever, we're going to be talking about the possible actions the EU could take over legal action. Um, not to mention the fact that the EU is already taking the UK to court over taking unilateral actions in March. So we're going to be kind of further opening up the discussion. So I spoke to two people on this. Um, one is a person who specializes more in law in uh, Europe. So thank you to that person. If you uh, recognize anything from this article from the uh, Discord survey it was mentioned in, I would rather you not mention anyone involved in writing this. And if you do, you will quickly get uh, muted. Don't ask. You know, this person asked to remain uh, private or I gave them that option and they took it. Um, I spoke to someone else as well, um, another legal person who operates elsewhere. Um, he gave me some good advice. So thank you, Dastardly. Um, so yeah, you know, we'll talk about the, um, kind of posts that I've written up now based on the kind of things that they've told me, um, for the most part. So, so for, they have, the EU has three options here. So the EU can continue with the legal action that commenced in March when the UK made the initial unilateral decisions. The EU, um, triggered the infringement proceedings with the letter of formal notice. The UK's reply was deemed not good enough. The next step is to seek a reasoned opinion. This would mean um, that the requirements are met to have the case heard in the European Court of Justice of the European Union, so the CJEU, and the case should be heard as early as September. So I've read other articles that mention that it will be um, this court, this case will go to court in early autumn, so somewhere some September or October. So this kind of lines up with other articles I've read on this topic. So. We'll talk about the pros and cons of each one after we kind of talk about each one and we'll go from there and we'll talk about which one I think the EU are going to take in my kind of novice and basic opinion. So the second option is the EU could trigger the dispute mechanism, so the arbitration procedure in um, the uh, EU-UK withdrawal agreement. So this, in this case, it would be independent arbiters looking at this, um, the agreement and the kind of um, the issues around what's going on so far with the uh, UK's unilateral or action and stuff like that so they will be uh, assembled like the Avengers and will have to kind of give judgment on the case um, that could take a while and we'll talk about why um, sort of when we get to the second point the third option is the most serious option according to the person who I've gotten this from and it does make sense that the um, the EU would um, trigger cross retaliate uh, would trigger things like tariffs and start suspending parts of the TCA so that would basically cause a trade war and that's problematic because of the fact that it will have a big impact on um, Northern Ireland because of goods going from GB to Northern Ireland the um, exporters would have to pay a tariff and then that tariff would have to be refunded once they prove that the goods stayed uh, within Northern Ireland. That can be quite tricky. So that would be the most damaging um, all round. You know, no one wants to see a trade war. We've already seen a trade war between China and the US and the EU and the US. And the US did not do too great because they can use target tariffs and target specific MPs if the EU are being smart. They could also target financial services as well amongst other services. So we'll talk about the specifics in option three um, in a bit. So starting with uh, point one which is about going to court so this case could be heard as early as, as september the case will be heard and argued in a public hearing which is great so we get to see everything that happens uh, decisions can take months to deliver after hearing as everything presented in court is examined carefully and each judge writes up their options um and their opinions as well that would have to happen so this could go to court in September it could take a while but some of these cases can be expedited and done within weeks because they'll be given absolute priority um, so decisions of the court are taken by a majority judgments are made in open court and subsequently pu uh, published so this is most likely the best option because everything is done publicly the only problem is that the UK have a or well, some people in the UK have a deep-seated hatred of European courts and see them as foreign courts, you know, forcing laws on us that we don't want. And so I think that any kind of European sort of court, you know, opinion will be kind of disregarded by the British public and certain MPs saying that, oh, what are these British, what are these foreigners doing, you know, giving judgments on here? You know, I thought we left the European Union. 
we left Europe. Why are they giving us court opinions? So I can see something like that happening. So um, that could be dodgy. Um, not to mention the fact that they're gonna, people are going to claim that, oh, of course, they're going to take the EU side. These are European courts. They're not independent. So that's one of the issues with taking this action, um, going to court. But um, there are benefits um, as well. It gives the European Commission and kind of the other member states a lot of cover because they're not the ones that are going to take the um, actions. It's going to be the courts that say that these should be the punishments, which we'll talk about in a minute. So I think this option will give the um, other European leaders um, a lot of cover in that respect, and they will hide behind the courts, not in a cowardly way, but in a sense of, well, this is not us making the decision, it's the courts. So, however, there is an option of applying to the Court of Justice for an expedited procedure. The expedited procedure enables the court to give its rulings quickly in exceptional urgent cases by reducing procedural time limits and giving such cases absolute priority, which is something we mentioned. So they could take this option because they want legal action to happen quickly because the UK could take unilateral action over the, um, the grace period ending at the end of this month. So it's going to be interesting to see what the EU's kind of... I, I've written this up before the UK asked for an extension by the way that's the whole reason this kind of article and well, this kind of word document and um, video exists but I'm just telling you now just in case and it kind of to enlighten people more about what's going on so the person says they expect the European Commission will make the request for an expedite procedure. If this action was taken, it would mean the judges who decide the punishment, if any. So if it comes to, you know, trade sanctions or tariffs, it would be the EU judges who decide the specific tariffs by the looks of things. I would have thought they would say, tell what um, the Commission what the possible options are and the Commission goes from there. But this is what I've been told and um, this should be right. I, I have no doubt in the person who has given me this information. So that wraps up the first point about... Um, legal action so it could take it could start in September and it could be over as quickly as October for example it could be done within about a month if um, the EU asks for an expedite procedure which is most likely what's going to happen because no one wants this legal case wrangling on for months especially if the UK keeps taking unilateral actions so on the second point um, the second point about going to arbitration so this is where dastardly came in um, this is where I asked him a lot of questions and he did his best answer and he you know I really appreciate his answers because they helped me um, understand a lot of things my background isn't in law um, my background really isn't in anything apart from chaos and rambling which I'm great at but enough of those two so he talks about arbitration so it can work that way yes arbitration is fundamentally a matter of contractual consent so we know that arbitration exists within the um within the northern ireland protocol so they can go to arbitration both parties can name an arbitrator in the agreement they can agree to a list of uh, names and reserve a right to strike a certain names off from the list or they can agree to have one person pick the arbitrators for them so you could have a list we don't know the specifics of what the well i don't know the specifics of what the withdrawal agreement has but I'd assume there would be some sort of list um, and they would tick names off this can take a couple of weeks according to Dastardly um, so hopefully then we get to see what happens there but if there isn't a list and they have to pick arbitrators I assume this could take months if you have to you know pick names out of people who could act as arbitrators because the other side may have issues with those specific arbitrators they go on to say but typically the organization in ch in charge of the arbitration that the parties agree to will publish a list of names to both sides both sides have t a time to um, strike names and then for the names that remain the organization will select one with the arbitrator's consent so i think it'll be more than one it'll probably be about three or five an odd number i'd assume um, but it depends he doesn't know the specifics of it because this isn't his area but he gave me the kind of general idea of arbitration so thank you uh, for that dastardly um, yeah it can take a m months for simple cases talking about arbitration out here in outer heaven or battle city if you don't know where they are google them it usually takes two to three years if using public courts so for a case as complex as this arbitration could take um, months or even years potentially this is one of the reasons why I think it won't go to arbitration. Um, they go on to say, and COVID has kind of thrown a wrench into uh, lots of things. One thing I've heard about international diplomacy is that the worker bees in the civil service do a lot of detail in advance. So it'd be people within the commission who would start writing stuff up to make a strong legal case. So as soon as the UK, if the UK takes unilateral action, the EU are ready to go, you know, power right in the kisser. You know, bam, big right hand being thrown. That's what's most likely happening right now, considering that the EU were taken massively um, unaware by the last time the UK took unilateral action. It looks like Sefcovic and von der Leyen and the gang are a bit more prepared this time out, but we'll see. 
um, you know, I've this is my opinion. So I've heard the EU are already working on legal action. If the UK take unilateral action, they are just waiting for the UK to play the card. So essentially, they're saying they're waiting for the UK to play the trap card, unilateral action, and then the EU will go from there. So that's an assumption on my part. It's not from him. It's from me that the EU are working already on legal action. But we'll see. He um, goes on to say, so when the big boss shows up to sign, everybody already knows everything that's going to happen. It's just theatre at that point. The composer conducts the symphony with pure ease as everything has been scripted. But to answer your non-legal question, arbitration is an option in theory. Um, it can, um, so yeah, this is something I've copied and pasted uh, before. That's my bad. Um, but typically the organisation in charge of arbitration parties agreed to, I've mentioned this. He says it depends uh, on the, the system of arbitration. So he says, I mean, it depends on what the parties agree to. If we're using the uh, AAA standard commercial rules, you have 14 days to strike names from a list given to you. So uh, according to um, Dastardly, the AAA companies usually have a list of names and you just take off whichever names you um, don't approve of. Um, within about 14 days you have about two weeks to figure that out we don't know if that's the mechanism I assume it probably is so that means two weeks to pick arbitrators then potentially say minimum a year from what I've read and what I've the people I've spoken to say about a year to go through arbitration I mean the EU have taken months to take um, AstraZeneca to court as is so um, I think that's a uh, slightly less potentially complex case than this one I'm not sure. I'm not a lawyer. Um, I should have really mentioned that at the start. I'll, I will mention that at the start. I'm not a lawyer. So this is not my area of expertise. I'm just some dweeb who does politics. So what we can what we can gather from this is arbitration to pick the arbitrators can take a number of weeks so long as the names are already there on a list. If not, it can probably take months and arbitration itself can potentially take months. Uh, arbitration is the most neutral option as both sides will have to pick names and so whatever the arbitrators come up with it's very hard for anyone to hit back against them whether that be from the UK or the EU. However, the issue with arbitration is it can take years um, and the other issue is that one side is blatantly in the right, the EU, and the other side is blatantly in the wrong, the UK. So I don't think it's going to go to arbitration purely because it will take a long time but this gives um, the EU the most cover to take any actions um, regarding you know suspensions of the TCA or you know any kind of financial penalties this is the option that gives the EU the most cover the issue is that it's too time consuming in my opinion at least I could be wrong if you have a different opinion on that shoot and so with the third point it's straightforward the EU can retaliate if the UK takes unilateral actions Oh, tea's great. So basically, the EU, um, I think it's the Commission and the Council, they are the heads of the member states. They can start suspending bits of the TCA. They can just do it. They can say, look, you've taken unilateral action again. Boom, you've been hit. They can stick a tariff on, for example, beef, um, lamb, uh, pork, um, chicken, wherever we export fish could be an option. Wherever they want to uh, target whiskey, um, wherever they want to target that the UK produces, tariffs. The only problem is that will negatively impact Northern Ireland massively. So I can see them going for financials more than anything. So if we um, read into what I've written or what has been written, it looks like the EU wants to... So with the legal action, um, the reason why it's taken... Well, that's the conclusion. Oh, I'm losing my head. Um, key point is the EU can take unilateral actions here. If The EU can start suspending parts of the TCA. The problem is this gives them the least cover. They can't um, say this was a court that came up with this. They can't say it was arbitrators. This is directly the EU Commission and the EU, uh, the Council of the European Union taking direct action against the UK in retaliation to um, unilateral action if the UK takes it again. And this will put us directly at odds with the EU and put us straight into a trade war. This is the most risky approach. This is the most damaging approach for um, the UK, but also for the EU. But I don't think the UK will put retaliatory tariffs on because we're not checking EU goods at the moment. So it'd be very difficult to put tariffs on. So the EU has basically a free swing at the UK until the UK actually starts doing import checks. At least that's my opinion. I could be wrong. If I am, let me know. No, no problem if i'm wrong about any of this just comment you know come with some evidence and you know I'll, I'll do a correction video if there's you know a lot of mistakes that i've made no problem there chief but point being is that this is the option that's the quickest but also the most risky i don't know if the eu are going to take this action especially since um court proceedings are already underway and we'll have to wait till september and so if we talk about why the eu have taken so long um to take legal action we'll talk about that now so 
you know, it looks like the EU want to take legal action, the legal action route, which can take months. They're already doing this with the UK's previous um, unilateral actions. Um, the, an issue why it's taking so long is that the UK asked for more time at the last minute. So that threw a bit of a wrench into the works. The other reason is that the UK has not massively deregulated the meat industry. So the threat to the single market from a health perspective is not that bad. This was written before the UK agreed to the, fully agreed to the, um, well, it's not been voted on, but the UK-Australia deal. And it looks like that 15-year um, sort of tariff and uh, quota implementation window might be disappearing. We don't know yet about the specifics, but this could throw a wrench into this point here about the health-specific thing. Because, um, you know, Australian beef is at a lower grade than um, EU and UK beef. And so if that beef starts going into Northern Ireland, that creates a problem here. And it means that this is that does become a threat to the EU single market. So that's an issue if, if that happens. Also, this is an, a key point that I think a lot of people don't know about. I didn't know until someone told me about it more recently. So um, thanks to that uh, subscriber. Massive credit to you. Also, with March's season coming, acting now would further inflame tensions. We're going to do videos kind of about the tensions rising within Northern Ireland as is um, with unionists um, threatening, you know, peace or the protocol. So not great. Um, the, UK may, uh, the UK may be happy to, uh, to inflame tensions, but the EU clearly are not. And that's the point that the UK, apart from our, uh, requesting an extension to um, the grace period, the UK have been constantly inflaming tensions with, you know, frost, um, but also Boris Johnson saying we might do Article 16, um, you know, Northern Ireland, you know, P the EU need to get through their heads. We're a single entity and blah, 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 all that nonsense. He's really inflaming tensions and really pushing the unionists to do something. The EU clearly are not about that life. Perhaps um, they, that should be think, not thing. Um, just let me correct that. Perhaps they, the EU, think that if the troubles return, they won't be stopped like last time, at least not for a while. The troubles lasted a long time. It's from the 70s, 1970s, till about uh, 1998, when the Good Friday Agreement was signed. Um, the EU will most likely attack financials rather than implanting tariffs. I don't know if implanting is used in the right context there, but allow me as this would have a much lower impact on Northern Ireland. So the reason why legal action has taken so long is because you know, legal action does generally take a long time. Um, not to mention the fact that I think the EU just want marching season to go away um, because March uh, is when tensions are inflamed, especially now, given the current situation in Northern Ireland with the DUP and the Unionists. It's not a great scenario all round. Um, so I think the EU are trying to avoid that. So I can see them accepting the um, UK's request for an extension um, so you could argue this video is kind of pointless in some ways. Um, that's fine if you want to argue that I've wasted your time then. Apologies. But point being is that this, these are the possible scenarios the UK could take. Uh, sorry, the EU could take um, if, if the um, UK decide to take unilateral actions. So in conclusion, what have we learned? The EU can continue with the legal action they are taking. Um, most likely they will, regardless of any of the other two options. They will take the legal action that they are already taking. And that's going to be probably concluded within September or March if they ask for um, an expedited um, case, if they ask for it to be sped up, expedited procedure. So that could be wrapped up within October and the judges will uh, decide what the punishment should be. There's option one. Uh, done by October for the most part gives the EU some cover with regards to the judges making the decision and not the commission or the council directly okay there is the second option which is um, arbitration which will give the EU the most cover as these will be independent arbitrators issue is that it will take a very long time to uh, resolve minimum a year I think minimum that's a long time that's a long time if a day is a long time in politics a year is an attorney the third option is the most quickest one, which is that you could immediately start suspending parts of the trade and cooperation agreement. This is something Sefcovic has threatened. So if Sefcovic has threatened it, he's going to have to do it. Um, if not, he's going to look very, very weak and pathetic, um, which has been kind of the response all around from both groups, I guess. More so from the UK than anything. I mean, the EU have been slow, but um, we kind of, as I spoke to more and more people about this kind of topic, they kind of made it make sense that, you know, maybe the EU's response isn't actually pathetic. It's just very time consuming because of legal action and the fact that they may want to avoid marching season because this time the rabbit may not be put back in the hat if the troubles start again, especially since the um, the things that were in place before are gone now. Um, the UK was in the single market and the customs union um, when the Good Friday Agreement was signed. The UK is no longer in the customs union and the um, 
single market. So that would make um, a hard border potentially more likely. The problem is, oh, sorry, the good thing is the Good Friday Agreement stops a hard border happening. So it's either a border in the Irish Sea or a border around Ireland. And, you know, a border around Ireland isn't going to happen. So where what happens there then? That's the problem. Um, do you allow goods to flow in, you know, via backdoor from GB to Northern Ireland, then potentially into Ireland uh, with no punishment to the UK? I mean, WTO members won't be happy about that. But um, yeah, you know, the UK is under growing pressure. The G7 um, put a lot of pressure, I think, on Boris Johnson to not do anything stupid and take unilateral actions. Um, that's probably the main reason why I think Frost asked for an extension. But again, I don't know. But what I do know is this video has gone on for a long time. Let's have a quick look. Um, yeah, that's a long time. Um, thank you to the people who contributed to it. Um, I guess this was done in part by three different people. Um, one was um, the uh, person I spoke to, the expert in um, sort of European European stuff, European law, um, Dastardly, and also um, another person, a subscriber, a uh, journalist. Um, so thank you all around everyone involved in this. Um, you know, this channel exists for people, but, you know, as I, you know, kind of do more videos and try and help people understand subjects, you know, I myself have to learn about these subjects and also have to ask for help. And this channel doesn't really exist without the help of the um, subscribers. So a um, massive, massive thank you to everyone who was involved and a massive thank you to everyone who's managed to watch this slightly ramblier video than normal. I think I've cranked it up to about nine on the rambly scale, but yeah. Um, these are the EU's options. I think this is an important video to do because not a lot of people have covered this um, so much. And, um, you know, thankfully I have people in the audience who are very intelligent, um, as most of the audience are, and can help me on these videos, which I have no knowledge about. You know, I didn't know, you know, the two out of the three, well, I didn't know one of the three things here, which is arbitration. I didn't know the specifics of option one, really. Um, the only one I knew was three, because three is a simple one for a simple person like myself. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.